Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 And unto the angel of the church of the blood the scenes write, These things say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot, so that because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the same of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eyes out, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. And am set down with my father in his throne. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, saying, Come up hither. I only read that to show you that we are in the last church age. The next event coming is a trumpet. The trump. And I don't mean Donald. And we'll be caught up. This church, the last one, began 1881 with a revised version of the, of the Bible in England. This is how this church began. It begins with a polluted Bible. And after that, America falls in 1901 with her ASV. So, look at 20 years. 20 years after England blows it, America blows it. Laodicean means rights of the people. So a country has a constitution and a bill of rights. Now how did God know that? This says the date of this book written is AD 96. And how did, how did God know in 1776, America will build up a constitution and proclaim, We the people. These things say the Amen. That's what you're supposed to say when it's true. Amen means so be it. You say Amen. Not, amen. Amen. See, that other stuff is just fleshy. It's to call attention to yourself. Amen. What the Bible says. We read that in Nehemiah. They threw in an extra amen. What were they doing? They were opening up the word of God. They were amen because here it is. We're going to get the truth. Amen. The faithful and true witness. Okay. We come from a missionary church movement. 
Until now, Jesus is the faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. Well, that's kind of interesting because what are our public schools teaching? Evolution. We are reminded in the last church age, God created. God had to throw that in there by the Holy Spirit because there are churches today that deny Genesis 1. There are public schools and colleges that deny Genesis 1. I know thy works. And we've seen that through the churches. God knows what you're doing. Thou art neither cold. Oh, isn't that great? Nor hot. Oh, boy. I would that thou were cold or hot. God saying, listen, will you choose one? Imagine God saying, I, I would that you just be cold. Imagine God saying that. Just be cold. Or hot. And you would know that that's God wants us to be on fire. God wants us nice and hot. But I guess a, a cold glass of water is good too. And compared to what kind of water that we're, go, we're going to be talking about next. So cold here is not that, you know... You're not doing nothing. It is cold, it is refreshing as much as hot water for tea. I don't know if they had coffee back then. But I guarantee they would have some kind of teas. Spices. So then, because thou art lukewarm. Putrefying, disgusting. So do no purpose. Neither cold nor hot. I will spew, I will vomit, nauseating, vomit or nauseating. That's kind of interesting for God to say. You're lukewarm, so I will spew thee out of my mouth. How do you know those, those angels are not pastors? Because God doesn't swallow preachers. Some people say those angels are the preacher. Here's a twist in doctrine. Here's God saying, I will spew you out of my mouth. God's taking the church into his mouth, not the church taking him into his mouth. What he's saying is, you're making me sick. I'm nauseated. 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 8. Because thou sayest, the church saith, I am rich. I'm increased with goods and have need of nothing from God. Look how big my building is. Oh, we can raise a million dollars for our building program. Look at all the people we got. Look how good our choir is. We have need of nothing. We don't pray to God. We don't get on our knees for God. We don't seek God. If we need money for a building program, we go to the bank and get a loan. Many churches have done that and fallen. And knowest not that thou art wretched, that sunk in deep affliction, or distress, or grief, wretched, and miserable. How many pastors out there have to take uh, alka -Sulsa? Or has God to go to a doctor because of an ulcer condition? And poor, but you're rich, but yet you're poor. And blind, oh yeah, there's one, blind. Just as the Pharisees were blind when Jesus dealt with them. And naked. Looking for my note here. Even with hats, Spring dresses, suits and ties, you're naked. Oh, I think a Christian should dress up for a church. You're naked! But God says, This is the outside and the inside of the church. I counsel thee to buy me gold, tried in the fire. Gold that is not tried in the fire is tarnished. It has impurities. 
James 5, 1 through 4. It's not pure gold. It's not clean gold. It's not the purest and finest gold that they brought to Solomon to build the temple. God's saying you're not pure. That thou mayest be rich. You're not rich. You think you're rich, but you're not rich. You're not going to get many crowns. You're not going to get many rewards. And white raiment. White raiment, we'll see later on, is, is the righteousness of the saints. That thou mayest be clothed. Because you're naked. People know what goes on. You witness to them. Well, I know what that pastor did. I know what that piano player did. You won't believe what those Christians do. You're naked. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. So God says you're naked. I don't care what kind of messages you got. You're naked. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve. And it's anointment. It's, it's a medicine. It's a cream. Your eyes are infected. You need to open them. You need to relieve you need to get rid of that disease so you can see. That thou mayest see. And they got all kinds of things saying glad to see it produces this. I had. God says, listen, the main point is, it's not the medicine. It's that your eyes are diseased and you need something. As many as I love, I rebuke. And he rebukes this church. Philadelphia never got a rebuke. And chasten. Ooh, that's a whip on the behind. Be zealous. Be on fire. Therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door. Remind you of Philadelphia. Remember I kept saying about the door? Be careful. As I'll tell you in the next church age. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Wait a minute. On which side of the door do you knock on? The outside. This church, Jesus Christ, is on the outside. If any man hear my voice, not only knocking, he's calling. And open the door, free will. Any man, he's not talking to the full assembly. He's talking to somebody, one person. Hear my voice and open the door. Wait a minute, I thought the door was open in Philadelphia. No man can shut. I have opened the door that no man could shut. That perversion of the modern Bibles closed the door in 1881. There's a problem in 1881. Scripture with Scripture. When Jesus closed that door that no man could shut in Philadelphia, guess what he did? He stepped outside and it's knocking on the door. And now he says, if any man will open that door. So God's not done with his church age, but Christ is not in it. And it's working on individual people. I will come in to him. Him, not them. And will sup with him. And he with me. Even Jesus on his last night got to sit with 12 men. Here with the church, now it's just one. Individuals. To him that overcometh. Again, we saw that in 1 John. That's not us today. We've overcame. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Even as I also overcame. And am set down with my father in his throne. That's where he is today. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, why can't we have a revival today? 
First of all, we got the wrong Bible. Um, there's no praise in this church by Jesus Christ. Oh, there was a praise in Philadelphia. We got social character in a mechanical church. We've got a building in specific times. We even got times for the young, for the elderly, for the for the teenage. We see even down Daytona Beach that, that there's even different buildings for different children, different uh, young people and the old people. So that you lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Read 1 Kings 11, verse 6 on that. We are nauseating in the eyes of God. We make them sick. We are distressed and grieved. Cold and dead is the Roman Catholic and the English and the Methodist and most of the churches today. They're cold and dead. You walk in there, it's a mausoleum. I've been in a Catholic church for most of my young life. It's dead. And even some Baptist churches are dead. The messages are dead. The preacher is dead. The people are dead. I know one church right now, a fine man, that was, he was the only one that would go knocking on doors. No one else would. He's out in the missionary field now. God used him. He, he God opened the door. I mean, God knocked on his door. He opened it and sent him away to do work for him. It's tarnished. It's full of impurities. It has committees, social societies, and clubs. The revivals are paid evangelists and paid singers. The theme of this church is soul winning. Yet many don't do nothing. It's cathedrals. Cathedral like buildings. It's elegant preachers, paid singers, large congregations and worldliness. It's pride in building and attendance and the attraction of what they are. It's the praise of preaching and the singing. When somebody comes to visit that church, a guest preacher, a guest evangelist, even I've had this happen to me. We came in on flight, it was very late at night or very early in the morning. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, I we had to go and see the church first. Before we were taken to our hotel room. And my daughter's nodding in her head. It was just a storefront. But look how great it is. They boast of membership. Money and not God is the key. Which replaces the Holy Spirit. They even got now schools and seminaries where a pastor sends his people to do them. Where the pastor himself is not teaching his own sheep. The Bible. That is against the teaching of Paul. You got a congregation and somebody is called to preach and someone is... is called to study their Bible pastor it is your job it's a church of perverted Bibles we said they changed the hymns and they got worldly music they have no God and godly sight thanks to Donald Trump now we are totally a political church we can now, next election, have from the pulpits legally say, vote for this man. Before you couldn't say that. 
but now you can. Oh, but they even besides the law, they was they would lean to the person they they would want the church to vote to, but they would not name. But they're a political church. They would say things like, "If you don't vote, you're not a Christian. If you don't vote, you don't have the right to complain." And yet the church today does not pay any taxes. They are tax exempt. And the people who don't vote, with many others, do pay taxes. Jesus Christ stands outside. The church excludes Christ. We had a woman today come up to us and say, that's not what Jesus would do. I think one of the things I said to her, it's on video. You haven't read your Bible. You got Christians that come up to you and will say something completely opposite of the Bible, not knowing because they don't study and read their Bible. And they think just because you offend them that we need to shut up, pack up, and go home. When Jesus spoke to his disciples, he said, when that city, they reject you, you wipe off the dust of your feet. He says, woe unto those cities, Carissa. He said, been better for Sodom and Gomorrah than you because you've heard the truth. You don't want God to say, Stanley, wipe that dust of Daytona Beach off your feet, you're moving somewhere else. You better be quiet, lady. You better be quiet, people, because maybe God will say, okay, fine, I will get rid of them. I will move them. They exclude Christ. It's a closed door. As I said yesterday, many churches were called the open door. you got to change that name to closed door. Satan is inside amening the preacher or the preacherette. They have allowed Satan to come into their church and kick Jesus out. They have alcohol in their churches. And if you were to start a church and you need a, a insurance, one of the things on a church insurance policy is in case your teenagers get too drunk. I've read the paperwork. I even called on that one. I was like, wait a minute. And I was to a rude awakening that the guy told me on the other phone about churches and alcohol. So a man that allows alcohol in the church for a fellowship cannot be preaching against alcohol. They don't even preach against sin, but we want a revival. I'm telling you why there will be no revival. And then you get up and say, well, there'll be a revival in my church. So you're rich. You're increased with goods. You have need of nothing. And you just open up your big mouth in pride. A word, a name of the Bible today would be signed on this church, Ichabod. And boy, I have thought of many times, I had a wife of mine that even stopped me putting a sign on like that on the church property one time. That's how far I was going to go. I was going to write Ichabod on the sign and put it above the door, sort of like uh, Martin Luther did to the Catholic Church. We are at the point when Martin Luther set forth the Reformation that these churches are rotten and unpure and tied the Bible and closed the Bible. And we are at the point now of dead churches where there is no Bible. Oh, open up the ASV. Open up the N That's not a Bible. And you ask my family, I've got Christians who are saved and will battle me on the Bible.
They will defend their worldly version against the King James Version. That's incorrect. That ought not be so. As the world, the church rejects the Jews. They don't even know who a Jew is and what a Jew is. Kind of hard when you've got a whole Bible full of them. And finally, here's the biggest one. Why there's no revival today. They love the pastor more, if not Jesus. There are people that pastor moved away across the nation they would move with him they would there are people there if the pastor died they would quit going there are people oh if you say anything against my pastor i'll fight you but what you mean what what do i say about the bible and jesus christ you better check your love you better check who you're serving because that's a man that's an idol. It's supposed to be all about Jesus Christ. And the pastors have got names and Jesus does it in the church. And the next big step, the trump will blow and we will hear come up hither. This is the last church age. This is the church age that God says no more. It's it. You know, it's like a it's like a husband and wife. You know, they, they get they have these children, they have these children. Well, you know what? That one child, that's it. We ain't having no more. And that's what's going on now. And we are now in the Laodicean Church Age. And the Laodicean Church Age tells us also in the tribulation period, the end of the seven years, it's gonna be dead too. Allowed to see it disproves evolution. It don't get better. It gets worse. Until Jesus comes. And after that, it gets a whole lot better. 